today's gospel passage, the word tells us very clearly it is the feast of the dedication. And it is winter. It is the feast of the dedication and it is winter. And Jesus is walking up and down the portico. Well, it's winter now here in Melbourne. And I can understand why Jesus is walking up and down in the portico. You've got to keep your body warm. And, and Jesus continues this explanation of the good shepherd. The kind of, when you have three and four greetings that come one after the other in connection to a same topic, you're kind of running out of, uh, you're running out of things to say. But Jesus so beautifully speaks about the, the good shepherd. And he speaks about the sheep that are his own. The sheep that are not his, that refuse to, to come into the flock. <coughs> he reads something that happens in John 10 verse, verse 24. The Jews are observing Jesus all throughout. So the Jews gathered round him. After seeing him walking up and down the portico, they gathered round him and they said, How long will you keep us in suspense? Jesus, if you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus, Jesus responds, I have told you, but you do not believe. Now earlier we read in, in the scripture, the Lord would say, if you do not believe my words, at least believe the things that I have done. But here, Jesus kind of has given up even on that. He says, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe. So my words have not convinced you. My works have not convinced you. And so that's because you do not belong to my sheep. You're not of my flock. My words don't. My actions don't make you believe. And then Jesus just leaves it at that. After that, he does not does not go on to, to try and pester them. Rather, Jesus just leaves it at that. You know, this, is, this is something that you and I would also experience very often. If people have something against us in their heart, whatever we say or whatever we do is not going to change their opinion. And sometimes we are so bent on trying to change that opinion that we spend much of our energy, so much of our spiritual self, our emotional self in trying to change that opinion of the other, the opinion about ourselves in the other. I find it very, very amusing, but uh, we've been having the live streaming and when we have the live streaming, um, if you actually come around 9, 9, 10 or so, it starts at 9, 15, but if you start at 9.10, even before the, str the streaming begins, but we have already put it up on YouTube, every day there's one person who goes and dislikes it. So, you, know, you have the thumbs up and then you have the thumbs down. And even before the mass starts, there is one or two thumbs down already. Now, I haven't even spoken. We haven't even started the mass. So, Whatever is going to happen, irrespective of how well the Mass is going to be celebrated, whatever is going to be spoken, irrespective of what you do, I'm going to dislike you. Now, this, is just, this is just an example. We have no clue who it is or, or why it is. But so many people are there who we actually know, who, who, we, who are part of our family, maybe part of our friend circle or people who just don't like us. And whatever we say to them, whatever we try and do, or even our works, the, whatever our response be, be it that of goodness and kindness and love or understanding, and yet they will never, ever understand. They will never come around to, to, to maybe having a change of attitude. And I think it's important for us to have the Jesus approach to that. Not, not hating them, not getting upset with them, not getting angry with them. But I think what's beautiful is to let them into the hands of the Spirit and let them be. 
so that the spirit might then work in them. We as human beings always believe that we need to do all the work. We need to say things. We need to have our actions seen. And I need to change things around me. Maybe sometimes it's better for us to, to believe that, oh, Spirit of God, I offer this person, I offer this situation. And that is how we use the presence of the Spirit in us. Don't let the Spirit be, be hidden in one little corner as we play that very active role. Let the Spirit play the active role but through us as well. For us to be able to just say that one word, O oh Spirit of God, I offer this. It's beyond my control. It's beyond my hands. And then let the Spirit work. That is how, that is how the scripture tells us in John chapter 3, verse 8, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. Let the Spirit move. In whatever situation is there, let the spirit move. I always feel there, there, there are so many people, even after Jesus actually says this beautiful uh, discourse about the good shepherd. Verse 31 actually says, the Jews took up stones again to stone him. It's not changing them one bit. Jesus has give, given a lengthy discourse of the good shepherd. It's, it's one of the, it's, it's one of the, uh, portrayals of Jesus that we all love, the good shepherd, a beautiful portrayal. And yet the Jews were very unhappy. They took stones to stone him. Now, were these the ones who cried out, crucify him? Maybe some of them were the ones who also cried out, crucify him. But, but maybe at some point the spirit worked in some of them as well. Were they some of the ones who got converted at some point? Maybe they were. Maybe there were people who cried out, crucify him, who actually at a later stage in their life were able to experience the power of the Lord and embrace him. Isn't that what happened with St. Paul as well? When Stephen was being, was being stoned, everyone came and left their clothing at the feet of a young man called Saul, and Saul approved of it. So Saul was one amongst those who just couldn't accept this whole concept of Jesus and, and, and the crucified Lord and, and the resurrection and nothing. But somewhere the spirit worked in Paul. Somewhere someone prayed for Paul. Just as maybe someone, someone somewhere has prayed for us at some stage and we became the ones who were crying out, crucify him to the ones who embrace Jesus today. Someone has cried out for us. Someone has cried to the Spirit and asked the Spirit to take control of our heart. Someone cried out for Paul. At some stage, somewhere, someone left it to the Spirit. And the Spirit worked in Paul. And we read how beautifully Paul's transformation led on to this amazing ministry of the apostleship of Paul. And that's something we should understand as well. In our relationship with others, sometimes whatever we do, however well we do it, maybe they are not going to change their opinions about us. It's okay. At that moment, just leave it to the Spirit. Offer them to the Spirit and then let the Spirit move in His way. Don't keep poking our hands in between all the time and thinking nothing's happening. Why are they not changing their opinion about us? Let it be. Let the Spirit work in ways he knows best. How many people we have seen getting transformed by the power of the Spirit? Have confidence in the Spirit. Let the Spirit work. And we go about doing what the Lord has called us to do. We offer ourselves into the presence of Jesus and into the presence of the Spirit, even as we are in moving towards Pentecost, to know how to use the power of the Spirit within us so that we don't turn out disturbed individuals in spite of having faith. We don't turn out frustrated and angry in spite of being a part of, of the journey of faith. Rather, we show that calmness and that wonderful grace that Jesus showed through the power of the Spirit working in and through us. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Bring ourselves into the presence of the Spirit. O Spirit of God, not everyone around us accepts us. 
times we try to be good, but our actions and our words are misinterpreted, misunderstood. For whatever reason it be, maybe we are not coming across in the right way, or maybe they themselves are not in a situation to embrace what we say or do. So, Spirit, we leave them into your hands with a little prayer for them. They could be our own family, could be our own spouse, our own children. They could be people who were friends once upon a time but now misunderstand us. They could be people who just cannot accept what we do. But the Spirit of Jesus, here we say a prayer for them and we leave them into your hands. As we continue to do the good we can for them, continue to speak words of kindness as we can, but leaving the work to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.